On a peaceful Arizona afternoon, Brian Welch and his daughter Jenea share a mutual love for music. That's a song. Uh. But just a few years ago, Brian would have given anything for just a few moments of peace. I want to be here for Jenea. I wanted her to, she lost her mom to drugs and I, I just need your help. Please just help me, help me God. I, I said it from my heart. Known to his fans and friends around the world as head, Brian made it big, multi-platinum big, as co-founder and lead guitarist of the band Korn. The second record came out, hit number three on the Billboard chart. When we go to the third album, the, the album goes like 100,000 copies a week and we start selling. We kept climbing, Korn kept on selling records, more videos, more fame, huge shows. The band's unique sound, called new metal, is a mixture of heavy metal and alternative rock. It catapulted these five friends from Bakersfield, California into superstardom. And while most of the world saw Brian the rock star, the man who had it all, Brian tells a different story of how he was dying inside and attempted to kill the pain with drugs and alcohol. I go back on the road and I start, I start drinking, you know, and just be like, okay guys, let's party. Sweep every, all the pain under the rug, kept sweeping it under the rug. While it didn't seem to affect his music, it had a devastating effect on his marriage. I'd go home and me and my ex-wife would, would uh, do drugs and, and fight while Korn's just climbing up to the top. Brian tried several times to quit the drugs, but he was powerless to fight them. Then the arrival of his daughter Jenea changed everything. Brian and his wife Rebecca went on the straight and narrow, at least for a while. And that was like the best thing. that I was like, life's going to be good now. Life's going to be good. I got my fan. I got my wife. I got my baby. We're still climbing up. And then uh, I go back on tour. I got clean while she was born and stuff. I go back on tour, <laughs> pop open the beers after the first show. I'm instantly hooked again. Rebecca starts doing speed at home with the baby. And uh, I'm still climbing, you know, success. And home is just horrible. Rebecca's missing. I'm missing my baby so bad. When I come home, I'm so drunk or, or hungover. And then I spend a couple of days with my kid. I end up bumping into someone that does speed. I do speed at home with my kid. And uh, it just gets worse at home while the success grows, you know. Then his wife left him and Jenea, and they divorced. I panicked. I mean, nothing. my rock star dream, my money, nothing, none of my power, none of my... Gangster friends could, could stop that, that trauma from happening. Eventually, Brian won custody of Jenea. But that started a tug of war in his heart. He wanted to take care of his daughter, but hated exposing her to the wild party life of Corn. How could you leave um, um, a huge band that's like one of the biggest bands, like it's coming around, rock bands, that changed like music, you know? It's like, how, how can you leave that? But how can I not be there for my daughter? As Brian agonized over his decision, he dove deeper and deeper into drugs and alcohol. Then one day, he heard his daughter singing a corn song. When I heard Jenea singing a corn song called Adidas, it stands for All Day I Dream About Sex. It's like a party song, you know. And uh, when she sang that, you know, she didn't know what she was singing, but it was like, what am I doing to my kid, you know? I felt like a loser, the biggest loser in the, in the world. And that's when, around the time when I was having those thoughts, you know, I'm no good for this kid, you know. During that time, Brian went into real estate with two partners who happened to be Christians. They never troubled Brian with their faith until... At one point, you reached out to them. What happened? What made you reach out to them? Because you knew where they were Christians. They actually reached out to me. Through an email, Brian told his partners how his life was falling apart. One of them replied with a verse from the Bible. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. And I was like, could it, could Jesus be real? I was thinking that in my mind. Is this guy not just a goody-goody? Could, could there really be a God? And is he calling me? And I was like, I looked up that scripture and I was like, I wanted it to be true. Eventually, Brian went to church with him. So uh, we went to the service, and uh, the music came on, and all these people went up to the front and started praying, and I was like, this place is weird. 
But I was drawn. I felt I felt something going on. He said, does anybody want to receive Christ? And I did it for myself. I was like, and uh, I said the prayer, went home, rolled up a $100 bill, laid out a big line of speed, snorted it, and said, I, I, I remember it perfectly too. I, I was clear. And I said, Lord, if you're real like that guy says, please take these drugs from me. I can't quit. I want to do them, but I want to stop. Brian snorted speed and read the Bible for a week, searching for answers. Then one day... And I felt this peaceful presence, and I started shaking a little bit, and I got goosebumps everywhere. And the first thing I felt was, I love you. And I was like, Father, I just, I was frozen. I said, Father. I was like, this is God. And then it went away, but he was so real. It took over the high, and when it went away, the drugs just was, my mind was like, that was that was just drugs or something. That wasn't real. That wasn't God. And so I did drugs all night long. The next day, I woke up, and I had, to, I had a feeling to go to my Bible. I opened it up, and I pointed, and it said, the soul who sins is the soul who will die. <laughs> and to me, right then, I was like, I felt like God told me right there, I revealed myself to you last night. It's time for you to stop the drugs. It's time for you to be done. And I just was oh, consumed with fear. I was like, I went and grabbed all my drugs and threw them in the toilet and just said, I'm done, God. I'm yours now. I'm yours. And it's the last time I did drugs. That's pretty major for that to happen, for someone to be on drugs for so long. Yeah. It was a miracle. And to be totally clean. At that same time in 2005, Brian split from Corn and sent the music world into a spin. Brian, on the other hand, was baptized in the Jordan River and started his new journey. Well, how did it feel to be released from Corn? Um, to tell you the truth, God was real. He revealed himself to me. He kept revealing himself to me. And uh, I felt his presence at my house. He's speaking through my kid. Like, just all this crazy stuff was happening, and that's all that mattered to me. I was like, okay, that band stuff, the stardom, the money, everything, it doesn't matter anymore. It's God. God, he, it was so real that I was like, I don't care what I do the rest of my life. Oh. Brian has taken his responsibility as a father head on. And now, instead of lewd lyrics, Jenea hears her dad talking about the love of Jesus. Brian chronicled his story in a best-selling autobiography called To Save Me From Myself. He's also back in the studio working on a new album. Both the book and the music reflect Brian's journey from self-destruction into the loving arms of God. Why do you think God put you here on this earth? He put me on earth to have fellowship and intimacy with Him. And I'm going to spend as much time as I could possibly spend getting to know him every day. I don't want to waste any time. I wasted enough time. It's just, that's what I'm put on earth to do. To be intimate with God, get to know him as much as I can in here, and let him fill me with the Spirit so he can do the work by bringing people into the kingdom.